So this is the check totem pole, and what it is is a system that I developed that shows the hierarchy of survival reflexes. Your body is wired to survive in nature with no doctors, no therapists, no kind of magic on the side. So if something happens to you, there is a system throughout the entire body of reflexes that controls which system takes precedence over which other system with the one intention of maximizing your chances of surviving in nature. What, what that means, for example, is if you have a breathing problem, your body will sacrifice every other system in the body to make it most likely that you can breathe. You understand that? If you have a visual problem or a masticatory problem, everything will get sacrificed all the way down. Whatever it has to do, whatever position it has to put you in, you're going to go in that position. And that leads to, as you can imagine, a lot of asymmetric loading in, a, in athletes like runners or people that do repetitive movements. Even slight asymmetries like that under load can cause a lot of damage over time. And they induce muscle imbalance syndromes. They cause compression, torsion, and shear in joints. They lead to ligamentous instability, joint instability, and they lead to fields of disruption where you have some areas that are tightening up excessively and becoming hypomobile coupled with segments that are becoming hypermobile. So it leads to all sorts of booby traps for the athlete. It's like too many weak links in the chain. So uh, what I'm going to do is take you through a brief exposure to each of these systems. Now I, I have till what, 9.15, right? I'm going to be speaking in about 550 to 700 words a minute. If you guys get wet, don't worry, it's all filtered. <laughs> Okay, so at the top is the psyche. So just so you know what that means and what these symbols mean, the sun represents the ego, a person's sense of self. But the person's sense of self, you listening to me right now, you're only listening to me with about 5% of the consciousness that's working through you at any given time. So imagine an iceberg, the ego is only 5% of the ego, all the rest of it's underwater in the unconscious. The unconscious is what's regulating your breathing, your heartbeat, your digestion, your elimination, and 30 billion biochemical reactions a second in the human body. Your menstrual flow, everything's all regulated at the unconscious level. And so that would be really what's often referred to as the subconscious, the wisdom of the cells. The unconscious is the parts of yourself that you're not aware of. Sometimes it's referred to the shadow, but there's more to it than that. There's a personal unconscious, all the things that you're not aware of. For example, right now you're listening to me, but you're not thinking about your sixth birthday. That's in your unconscious. All the events of your life are in your unconscious, like a memory bank, like information on a computer, so you can access it whenever you need to. But your conscious mind's kind of just up here, like the, uh, you know, in a submarine, the little scope that comes up. That's all you see, but every, the whole submarine's underwater. And then you have a collective unconscious, which is the mind and the beliefs of your social group which could be your tribe, it can be your city, but in the human being, the collective unconscious is everybody in the world. So you're tapped into everyone in the world. Then you have the sacred unconscious, which relates to what's called the Imago Dei, the image of deity. And basically what that means is the Imago Dei is called the image that images. So before language develops, you have imagery in your mind. Even neonates dreaming in the womb are having images. So the image that images is really tied heavily with anyone's beliefs about what God is. An image of deity. So whatever we, we think God is has the hugest influence on our beliefs and our behaviors. And its research suggests that they can't tell whether your image of God creates you or whether your beliefs create it. Got that? It's a tricky one. It's like a mirror is what it is. Okay? So all these things get involved, and that's part of what goes on in the psyche. So the sun is ego, which means thinking and beliefs and values. 
right? There's a reason you're in this class. It, it has something to do with a value that you have, right? You're not in a class on how much monster to drink to increase performance right now. So there must be a value you have. Um, the bird represents the soul, which is the symbol for the inner life of the individual. So whatever's going on inside of you is the nature of your soul. It's the territory of your soul. Your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, your shoulds, your shouldn'ts, your highs, your lows, everything that you experience inside. For example, if you make a mistake, the way you talk to yourself inside, that's your relationship with your soul. How you connect to that which is greater than you, that's your soul. If you believe God's going to burn you in hell, that's something that you should work on. Because <laughs> that can cause a lot of back pain. <laughs> and it makes for a very unintelligent God. <laughs> okay. Um, so the darkness here represents the shadow. That's the parts of you that you repress because you don't want to look at it. So for example, a lot of gay people don't want to come out of the closet so they pretend to be heterosexual and they even go to rallies against gay people but many of them get caught don't they the answer is yes <laughs> so the reason they're doing that is because they're repressing the truth of themselves but when a person's under stress or in relationships with other people we, we always see things in people they don't see in themselves, don't we? That's because we can see what they're repressing. So somebody may not think they're an angry person, but if you talk to 10 of their friends, they go, this guy's angry all the time. He's, he's got problems. And you ask him, he says, no, I'm not angry at all. What are you talking about? Right? So the shadow is all the material that you're repressing, all your judgments, your shoulds, your shouldn'ts, against yourself, against people, against the world, but it's very active. Just because you don't know it consciously, it is very, very active, right? Um, the moon represents reflection and emotions. And it, the moon correlates to the water energies in the body, which is the second chakra, which relates to your life force energy, your sex energy. Life force energy and sex energy are the same, but I mean, life force energy is what you use to run your whole body. The second chakra is kind of like the battery system, but it also contains your energy for actual sex, for procreation. For example, when someone's adrenal system is fatigued, their sex drive is usually quite low or shut right off. So you see that when the sex energy goes down, the life force energy goes down, there's not enough energy to reproduce. So if a person's got uh, poor sex energy, poor life force energy, then they don't have enough energy to heal themselves. So if they're doing a lot of exercise, they can't recover, they just keep going further and further into a state of breakdown. 